Static code analysis is a great way of reducing security vulnerabilities, improve styling, and more within your code. With SFDX Scanner plugin, static analysis can be automated in your CI CD pipeline and improve overall performance. My name is Justin, and I want to show you how you can improve your code with SFDX Scanner plugin. Why use SFDX Scanner? It is a streamlined, automated way to flag security vulnerabilities, performance bottlenecks, field level security, and styling issues. Additionally, because this is a tool that runs this, there's no emotion and no bias towards this. In terms of what languages can the SFDX scanner run on, uh, the answer is all of them, right? So this includes obviously Apex as well as Lightning Web Components. Additionally, if you had for whatever reason, Python, any other um, random languages, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, etc. All of this uh, can be scanned by SFDX Scanner. This is because the baseline engine PMD is language agnostic. So to go and install SFDX Scanner, we're just gonna go ahead and run this inside our terminal, right? So we can just do a plugins install and we can get the latest version this way. In terms of running this, we wanna ensure that we're in our project directory, uh, but once you're at the base of the project directory, what you can do is run this using a SFDX scanner run. We need to pass in the target, um, which is gonna be the current directory with dot. Um, the format, which is gonna be a dash F. Um, we want CSV in this case. And then the output final, which would be in this case, scanner results.csv. Additionally, we can go and control the scanner rules by passing in the additional configs, PMD config or TypeScript config. And you can see an example PMD rule set here where we're going and breaking down the categories. Additionally, if you want to see this source code, uh, you can check the links below for the full article write-up. In terms of what output categories, like what rules are checked by this code, um, they're breaking down into these main categories, design, security, airport, performance, best practices, and documentation. In terms of getting a full list of what that means, um, you can run this command here to get the up-to-date version. Common errors include DML in a for loop, file doesn't compile, SQL in for loop, logic and trigger, and hard coding ID. I would say these would be something where you can go and really you'd be worried if, if something like this was in your code, whereas maybe some of the styling issues you're not so concerned about. So let's go into maybe a more tangible example. This is a wrapper class for um, a project that I built uh, called Kimi. You can check the link above here. Um, the Kimi is an open source QuickBooks integration where we're going and uh, integrating QuickBooks and Salesforce. So I ran SFDX Scanner on the Kimi code base, and what you have here is actually a wrapper class for the OAuth 2 authentication. I would say there's nothing inherently wrong with this, given that the code is kind of forced to use whatever QuickBooks has for variable names. But the problem that you run into is that we get a lot of code styling errors where the refresh token is not final because... Um, the variable naming convention that QuickBooks uses isn't really the standard that SFDX Scanner and, and Java-like languages prefer. And so we get a lot of errors. And this is a short list of maybe 20 examples in that like eight line class. And so what we probably realistically want to do is we want to just suppress those warnings. We can do that with the wire notation. So at suppress warnings, and then we just want to pass in the warnings that we want to suppress, right? So in this case, we're passing in the PMD, um, which happens to be the whole engine, right? So if down the line, someone wanted to do even more work with this class, then that would potentially go and suppress warnings that we don't want, right? But that's not really good. So let's just go and suppress a specific rule, which we can do using a dot notation, and then labeling the specific rule. And the, the issue with this is that we want to go and there's actually three rules that um, this class fails against. And so we want to just go ahead and suppress all of those. So we can go and get a comma separated list like this and problem solved, there is no more field errors. I would say in general, it is better to go and use this warning suppression to go and 
ignore rules or get a better rule list as opposed to going and running this through passing in your own PMD config. Now let's switch gears a little and talk about how we can use SFDX scanner with GitHub's actions, right? Why would we want to do that? Well, we want to automate the code scanning and we probably just want to see the results in uh, GitHub action, right? So what we'll need to do is we'll need to create nested folders inside our uh, GitHub repo, right? Whatever your, your repo is. So that's going to be a .github and then inside that .github, we want to create the workflows folder. And this is just the standard GitHub notation for GitHub actions. In the workflows folder, we want to go ahead and create the scanner.wine class, right? And then this is going to have some code that is going to go and run, right? Uh, again, full link to this code in the description below so that then you're not retyping this. Um, but what this does is that when there's a change inside your SFDX structure, you want to go and scan the files. So we'll go and check out the code. We'll install SFDX. We'll install SFDX scanner, and then we'll run the static analysis. I think one final thing that's important with this is we do have the JUnit format, which is more in line with what GitHub or CI CD pipelines want for an output as opposed to CSV or, or XML or whatever. So then what you can do is you can see inside GitHub, you can see the results of this scan, which happens to be a lot of results. By the way, uh, are you interested in more CI/CD content? Uh, let me know down below if you have any CI/CD automation running in your current Salesforce configuration. One other really cool thing about SFDX Scanner is the introduction of data flow analysis or DFA. And this was introduced in the version 3.x. And what this is, is this is a really great tool of understanding field level securities and how your code is accessing different data or records or fields inside of Salesforce. So you can see this is actually how the tool is running. I shamelessly stole this from the documentation page. So go ahead and check the links as well for, for that to see how maybe a little bit more in depth details on, on, ex on exactly what's going on. But essentially what's going on is that the code is being built and then um, we're going to go and check how data is ran within the program. And so to do that, what we can do is we run DFA. So we have the command scanner run DFA. We're gonna give a project directory, which is all of the code that needs to be ran. You have a target, which is going to potentially be all the code, potentially just one entry point. And then you have a out file of where you're putting the output. Now, one thing I mentioned in the previous slide is that you have a target file, which could be a directory, it could be a file, it could be a couple files. And well, why why would you want to do that? Why would you want to run, instead of on your full app, you just run it, run it on one file? And the reason why is because DFI is really taxing on the memory. If you could imagine, they basically build the whole code in your uh, memory, right? And so it's just really taxing. And so because of that, and keep in mind for the project Kimi, I had very difficult times running this within my laptop, which has 16 gigs of RAM. So what I'd recommend is that you go and probably just do analysis on single files or in the Kimi directory, there's actually a lot of subfolders or you can do the DFA analysis on that uh, as opposed to doing it on the whole directory. Additionally, I don't recommend running this in your CI CD pipeline. I ran this for about 15 minutes in GitHub Actions and there was no luck there. With that, that is everything that you need to know about SFDX Scanner. If you enjoyed this content, there's more content that you can see above uh, that I recommend watching. Additionally, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as it helps me know that I need to make more content. With that, thanks and have a great day.